Hello and welcome to Pink Paradox Reads. I'm Lisa, aka Pink Paradox. I read books, I watch horror movies, and I unbox stuff that has to do with books and horror movies. In this video, I'll be talking a little bit about some recent horror books that I've read. Let's get into it. All right, I've got my Pet Cemetery notebook at the ready. Let's get into this with the first book, which came from the Accursed Library in the Abominable Book Club. Every month we get a vintage paperback in the Abominable Book Club. And I read The Mask by Dean Koontz. This was originally published in 1982 under the pseudonym Owen West, and it was republished in 1989 with this familiar Dean Koontz design. I have certainly read a lot of Dean Koontz books with this design. Uh, this book has a familiar plot type involving a couple, uh, in this case, Carol and Paul, who are trying to adopt a child, but they keep running into difficulties and obstacles on their way. Uh, Carol has a near accident, uh, nearly running over Jane, who is a mysterious girl with an unknown past, and she becomes the daughter that they have been hoping for. But you know, with unknown pasts, mysteries tend to occur in these types of books and frightening things start to happen with and around Jane. Where had Jane come from? Was she just an orphan in need of love? Or was she hiding a more sinister purpose? Who was the girl behind the mask? So many question marks. Like I said, this is not the most original of plots. Uh, the writing is not the best either but it was a quick and fun read that i enjoyed very much with my hot drinks from the abominable book club next up we had a book that i was thrilled to receive in the april edition of the abominable book club box the last house on needless street by catriona war and i was uh waxing ecstatic about this book already in that video I started out uh, listening to this book on Audible, but I didn't really gel with the narration. It There wasn't anything wrong with it per se, but it just didn't hit me in the right way. So I ended up going over to a Kindle version of this book instead. And this book is seemingly about a man named Ted who lives on in a house on Needless Street with his cat Olivia and he has his daughter Lauren on uh, occasional weekends. Uh, it is also seemingly about a girl who is looking for her sister who has been missing for many years and she has just moved into the house next to Ted's. It is incredibly hard to talk about this book without spoiling it. I will say this, when I was reading this book, the further I was getting into it, the more and more stressed out I became because my brain was trying to figure out like what is going on really. Uh, the writing is sometimes surreal, uh, a bit like, you know, being drunk or drugged. At times I felt the writing was reminiscent of Paul Tremblay, especially his short story collection, Growing Things. Uh, some stories in there really reminded me of the writing in The Last House on Needless Street. Also, I was reminded of uh, Cosmology of Monsters by Sean Hamill, which was one of my favorite books from last year. And I kept flitting back and forth between, is this great? Do I hate it? It's just stressing me out so bad. I have read many books recently, it seems, and watched movies where the underlying theme of The Last House on Needless Street, the core of the story, if you will, uh, has come up. And for a while, I felt like my brain was maybe a little bit saturated with that kind of theme. At the end of the book, though, I was fully convinced that this novel is fantastic and that I was 100% in love with it. I cried while reading it 
and then I read the afterword by Catriona Ward where she talks about some YouTube videos that she watched uh, in preparation for writing the book and then I watched those YouTube videos and then I cried even more. As you may expect by now, I highly recommend this book, uh, but don't go into it expecting a conventional horror story or uh, a sort of conventional suspense thriller type story, um, but be prepared for an emotional uh, and really touching experience. Then we have a book that I read on a Kindle, Salt Blood by T.C. Parker. Salt Blood is set in a dystopian near future. I don't think we ever get a year uh, of when this is meant to be, but uh, this is about a reality where being publicly shamed online could uh, lead to incarceration. We meet main character Robin, who is set to serve her sentence in a high-tech new prison, uh, which is being built on a uh, barren island outside of Scotland. This is a brand new kind of prison setting, and the barren island has no natural light, no vegetation to speak of, no birds. Uh, kind of sounded like my literal nightmare, to be completely honest with you. What it might have, though, is a dangerous supernatural force which is now trapped on the island with the incarcerated people. This very unique blend of dystopian sci-fi and folk horror was really engaging from the get-go. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this book throughout. Uh, I really like the every, like pretty much all of the characters. And the setting was really interesting since I am Scandinavian. I can get down with the North Sea setting. This is definitely one of my favorite books of the year so far, and I am very much looking forward to reading more books by T.C. Parker in the future. And by the way, the awesome 80s inspired cover is designed by horror favorite Keelan Patrick Burke. I thought that was really cool. Another book that I read on Kindle and at first glance looks like it could be more of a thriller, suspense novel, uh, but I found that it read pretty much like a slasher movie, so I am including it here with the rest of the horror books. This is Whisper Island by Carissa Ann Lynch and when I first saw this cover I thought that looks really Norwegian. but. The titular island is in Alaska. And this is about four art school students, uh, Riley, Sam, Mia, and Scarlett. Uh, they decide to travel to this desolate island to work on their creative endeavors, you know, far away from the obstacles and diversions in society, and not to mention social media. There is not going to be any internet on Whisper Island. Things don't exactly go as planned though. Sam's brother turns up out of the blue with his girlfriend in tow and then murders start to begin. Like I said, this is definitely a slasher tone to this story of people being picked off one by one. Uh, it's not the most original or unpredictable plots, but it was definitely entertaining and it was one of those reads where the time just flies by. Then we have Dear Laura by Gemma Amer and this is another book that I received in the Abominable Book Club. Yay for short books! This is a novella which I have heard lots of great stuff about from other booktubers, bookstagram, and my friends in book club. This novella is about Laura, who is 13 years old when she and her best friend Bobby become officially boyfriend and girlfriend. Right after that, Laura sees Bobby go into an unknown van and he is never seen again. He is just vanished forever. A year later, Laura begins to receive letters. The first letter appears on her birthday and the letters are from a person who claims to have taken Bobby and killed him. 
the letter writer tells Laura that if she does not go to the police and that she gives him what he's asking for, he will give her clues as to where to find Bobby's dead body. Uh, with each passing year, Laura receives a letter uh, with increasingly intrusive requests that become more and more detrimental to her life and her health. Will she finally get enough clues to find Bobby's body? I really like this novella. I thought the writing was really good, uh, especially the part right after Bobby disappears. Um, the description of Laura's grief was really harrowing. The uh, story itself, I think, could um, have worked as a full-blown novel. I think Gemma Amer could totally turn this into a full novel, but it also works really well as a novella and I really recommend it. And yay for more short books on Kindle. Again, I read The Cockroach King by Andrew Cull. Uh, Andrew Cull wrote one of the scariest books I have ever read, uh, Remains. So I was very excited to check this story out. Uh, this is about Cassie who moves into a new house with her baby boy, Sam. Uh, this house reminds her very much of the house that she grew up in with uh, her own mother who has recently passed away from cancer. Cassie is still grieving her mother but she is determined to make a great life for herself and for baby Sam in this new house. She gets an old friend to help her out with the yard and he soon unearths a full dog skeleton. And like the tagline on the book says, after the skeleton, the cockroaches came. Now, I really love bugs. Um, I'm, I'm weird like that, but I do prefer to encounter them like one or two at a time. Uh, a big swarm of them is certainly terrifying and we really do get masses of bugs in this book. Uh, I once stayed a while in a, an apartment in San Diego, California, which was infested with roaches. And I don't know if you know that scurrying sound that they make, you know, you'd come home at night and turn on the lights and you'd hear the, all the roaches go beep, 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 beep. That, that's not the sound that they make, sorry. The uh, writing in The Cockroach King was very evocative of that scurrying sound. I could just hear it in my head. If you are scared of insects, uh, roaches in particular, this story should have you shaking. It's only 65 pages. Check it out. There you have the horror books that I've recently read. As usual, I would love to hear your opinion on these books if you have read any of them. I would also love to hear what the last great horror novel you've read was. That's it for this video. If you enjoy bookish videos like this one, unboxings and horror movie talk, please stick around and subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again next time.